We're five stories underground, so most people don't even know we're here. I think we may be better known around the world than we are on campus. <laughs> You should think of a synchrotron as a very bright x-ray light bulb. Uh, and then those x-rays, um, my personal humble opinion, is that they're the perfect probe for measuring almost anything. Batteries, fuel cells, catalysis, agriculture, pharmaceuticals, as well as structural materials, residual stress, things that show up now in additive manufacturing and so on. So this facility houses three accelerators. We probably have an order of 450 magnets in the storage ring. Uh, the synchrotron has about 200 magnets. And uh, when the magnets are all running, all three accelerators are probably in the neighborhood of about a megawatt. So it's a lot of heat. They all need to be cooled. Most of our magnets are cooled with water. So water plays a very important role here for getting heat out. For the past many decades, this wonderful place has been running on cooling towers. Cooling towers are huge. They take a lot of expertise, a lot of equipment, a lot of chemicals, a lot of water to run. This isn't very sustainable and it's very difficult to keep old equipment like this running. It's also very difficult to keep equipment like this up to the specifications we need when we have cutting edge research on the other side of that. Currently, we're going through an upgrade at the moment where we'll be replacing all four of our cooling towers with lake source cooling. So this is a very big step for us, especially in terms of maintenance, in terms of equipment, in terms of labor, and is certainly in terms of sustainability. Cornell's lake source cooling project relies on our proximity to Cuga Lake, which is an enormous reservoir of cold water, which is really an amazing model for really environmentally friendly ways to cool places. So before our lake source cooling upgrade, we were using about 1,800 gallons per minute to cool all of our equipment. With this new upgrade, we're able to save all of that water from the towers, which means we won't have to continuously keep using about 10,000 gallons of water a day just to refill after evaporation. We're also, with this new system, able to have much higher precision. The, the cooling towers are industrial pieces of equipment, and they weren't really ever meant to get between plus and minus 0.1 degree Fahrenheit. With our new equipment, we can achieve this easily. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. The opportunity to impact the future, to have impact, the global impact on things, the energy crisis, food crisis, you know, you name it, and unraveling the fundamental secrets of the universe. It all happens here. And so having a very stable, reliable, continuous source of cooling water is going to enable us to you know, literally go to the next level. <laughs>